sees the Christ in you. Everyone's a chosen one, the many and the few. All together now, it takes two. The Christ in me and the Christ in you. To know love is to be love, and I know love will stay alive. If the Christ in me sees the Christ in you, everyone's a chosen one, the many and the few. in me and the Christ in you. If my friend feels sad or broken, every time that my heart opens, love makes its way into the world. When the Christ in me sees the Christ in you, everyone's a chosen one. The many and the few All together now It takes two The Christ in me And the Christ in you I can do all things Through Christ who is my strength I can do all things Through Christ who is my strength I can do all stay through Christ who is my strength. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I can do all Namaste. And welcome to the Life Enrichment Center live streaming on this wonderful, beautiful Labor Day weekend. And um, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, even if you're out in the forest walking, I hope you brought your iPhone so you're present and watching this. Um, I'd like to invite you to um, just take a moment and let's just close our eyes and just let go of all the thoughts that we were having this morning, of all the thoughts that want to catch our attention now. And just slow down on our breathing and just allow our thoughts to slow down along with our breath. And as our thoughts slow, it is easier to become aware of this holy moment, this now moment where all life is happening, where our life is happening, the only place where life is truly happening. And so we speak our prayer into this present moment sacredness and to the power of now. And so we recognize right now that there is only one power and one presence in all the universe. 
in all of creation, and that is God alone. And we recognize God is love, love itself. And as that power that heals just by being present, and it is present right now, within every physical incarnation, within every mind, it flows through all of our emotions, it speaks to us. And so we speak our prayer for all of those who are calling for a physical healing. Whatever that healing may be, there is no large or small to the presence that can heal all. And so we just recognize that presence flowing through and bringing balance and healing to every physical incarnation for everyone who is calling for healing, for everyone who is open to healing. And we feel that presence within our own body and we just allow it to move through us, bringing whatever is called for into balance in our own body. And we feel the ease of being in this body and the joy of being in this body and the well-being of being in this body. And we know that the presence of God is a presence of peace. And we know in this moment as we speak our prayer that there is only peace. Peace within every mind. Peace within every country, peace, within every city, peace. That peace is all there is and it is the guiding force here and now. That moves through every mind and directs every thought and directs every word and action. And we are grateful to know that it is true. We are grateful to know that every prayer is answered in the moment it is spoken, and our prayer is answered here and now. As we open to that answer and we allow it to be so, and we do. And so it is. Amen. All right. Well, we do have a brand new month and a brand new opening affirmative statement. So if you would, repeat after me. I am responsible for what I see. For how I think and react individually. I let there be peace on earth because I let it begin with me. All right. Very good. I just shook my head because a masked person was at the front door. Huh. Okay. Well, we have a few announcements. And um, so our September focus is on the power of peace. I'll be talking about that a lot. But um, just wanted to say that in our opening song, The Christ in Me, sees the Christ in you, that towards the end there's a chant. It's Om Shanti Om. And that is a mantra for peace. So mm, that would be a lovely one to keep in mind and bring to mind whenever we want to center ourselves in peace. So CDs of today's talk, The Chain of Command, will be available upon request for $3 and on our website, lecflint.com, tomorrow as a podcast. Okay. Now, if you are an active member of the Life Enrichment Center, you will be receiving a couple of emails this week. And one of them um, will be to let you know that we are looking for, 
we're looking to fill actually two positions on our steering committee. And um, the qualifications for that will uh, be listed in the email. And if you are interested and you meet those qualifications, you can answer um, actually the e-announcement and we'll uh, get the information. Um, for now, I'll just say that it is a two-year term with the option of running again for a second two-year term. But at our annual meeting, which is the next email, the announcement you'll get, at our annual meeting this year, which will be on October 11th, I believe, and it'll be via Zoom at 2 p.m., we're going to be voting along with um, the candidates voting on the uh, positions to be filled for the steering committee, will also be voting um, for a, a return to our original bylaws for uh, the terms for the steering committee. And we'll be voting on making um, the terms a three-year term with the option of running again for a three-year term. So just wanted to let you know because just in case you were thinking, ah, oh, two years, well, three years. But it's a great opportunity. We have so much fun. We are such a loving group, so love each other, so love the Life Enrichment Center, and um, we have a, a joyous experience uh, sharing our thoughts and ideas for how we move ahead here at LEC. So um, everyone's welcome if you meet the qualifications. Um, and you'll find out what those are in uh, just a week. All right, let's see what else I have here. Okay, well, again, this Wednesday, we will be meeting via Zoom uh, for our What's Up Wednesday. And it is just amazing how our conversations go and We'll talk about something that's going on in our life and it'll lead to something else. And it's just so beautiful the way it flows. So if you'd like to flow with us, then we invite you to Zoom in at noon. You have to let Jim Gould know. He's our Zoom guy. And um, so just email him at j period r period gould123 at gmail.com and he'll send you um, the password and everything you'll need to join us and we begin with um, a centering meditation so that begins at 1205 so if you would like to participate in that then we invite you to be on time okay if you're new to LEC this morning it's really good, especially on a Labor Day weekend. And we're happy to have you. And um, uh, as we say, you may hear some concepts that um, you haven't heard before, um, probably concepts you were hoping to hear and they haven't heard before. So um, we believe that if you found your way to this live stream, then there's something here for you. So just listen because there is something just for you. And, um, and know that you are so loved by the universe and you're being supported in all that you desire to be and to do and to have. Okay. Well, for our new month, we have a new song and it is called Stay Together. Stay together? Oh, stand together. Hmm. Stay together and stand together. You really can't stand together unless you stay together. So either one works. Um, but it's by Faith Rivera and Harold Payne. Here 
That's a good one. That's not a good one? It's perfect for the power of peace. And as it's been mentioned and will continue to be mentioned all month, our September focus is on the power of peace. And after a whole month of focusing on power of play and month before that focusing on the power of joy, you may be thinking, <laughs> it's about time. Uh, with all that's going on in our country and the world right now, that our focus on peace could not have come at a more perfect time than now. But then again, any time is the perfect time for us to focus on peace. Thich Nhat Hanh said, every breath we take and every step we make can be filled with peace and joy and serenity. To walk in peace now, to talk in peace now, to act in peace now is a choice that we must all make now if we're ever going to experience peace in a world where the sounds and images of conflict and chaos seem to be everywhere. Peace begins with each of us because everything we experience begins within us. We perceive what we believe and we react to what we perceive as fact. Course in Miracles tells us your holy mind establishes everything that happens to you. Every response you make to everything you perceive is up to you because your mind determines your perception of it. Every day, 
and in every way it is essential for each of us to give peace a chance to be through us because that's the only way peace can come to earth before our eyes. No one can bring peace to us but us. Peace can't come into our human experience except through us. When there's peace in our mind, we experience clarity, resilience, and well-being. And we express compassion and helpfulness. We can only help the world by being responsible for who we are in the world. If we're waiting for peace to come into the world first before we calm down, then peace doesn't stand a chance to come into the world through us. The Dalai Lama said, true change is within. Leave the outside as it is. Now there's a story that the Buddhists tell that beautifully describes our irrevocable responsibility for what we see and who we choose to be. And it's said that one day the Buddha was walking through a village and a very angry, rude young man came up to him and began insulting him, saying all kinds of rude words. And the Buddha wasn't upset by the insults. Instead, he asked the young man, tell me, when, if you buy a gift for someone and that person doesn't accept it, then who does the gift belong to? And the young man was surprised to be asked such a question, and he said, well, it, it would belong to me because I bought the gift. And the Buddha smiled. And, it's, and he said, that is correct. And it's exactly the same with your anger. If you become angry with me, and I'm not insulted, then you are the only one who is unhappy, not me. The only one that you have hurt is yourself. Now sometimes we rant and rave at the TV, or we rant and rave behind someone's back, and on occasion we actually rant and rave at the person we're angry with. But anger, no matter how righteous we believe our anger to be, sustained bitterness and rage, no matter how justified we feel our bitterness and rage to be. And our blame and finger pointing, no matter how accurate we believe, we've pointed out where the problem makers are. All it does is harm us. It clouds our mind. It exhausts our emotions, and it makes us physically ill. And we add gasoline to the fire that's been set by those who, unlike the Buddha, agree with us that there is power in conflict and that peace can be achieved through force. Such thinking blinds us to a positive solution every time. As A.J. Musty, the pacifist clergyman who was um, 
quite prominent in the anti-war and civil rights movements, famously said, there is no way to peace. Peace is the way. Peace is powerful. It seems passive, only until we choose it. And when we do, we feel its potency. Now, I've quoted this Bible verse quite a few times because it's one of my favorites. It's from the book of Isaiah. It goes, though the mountains move and the hills shake, my love will not be removed from you and my covenant of peace will not be shaken. The force of that covenant of peace, quietly, calmly, and unconditionally dwells in us. It's there to choose in every moment. No matter what's happening in that moment that threatens to shake us up. It's a peace that requires nothing outside of us to happen first before it shows up in the present moment. It remains unshaken by circumstances. It never turns away, no matter what we humans do to deny it's there. But it does require something to happen within us first before we can feel its presence as a choice. The Dalai Lama said we can never obtain peace in the outer world until we make peace with ourselves. Peace requires all our desires to align with it. It requires our desire to let go of all the conditions that we've placed on allowing it to express through us. It requires our desire to choose peace of mind when there may be those around us who are losing theirs and blaming it on us. It requires our desire to relinquish our need to control the behavior of others and to remain peaceful no matter how tempting it may be to join in the conflict or drama of the moment. It requires us to choose it above all else so that we can feel it above all else, above the noise and the chaos and the confusion in any moment. Baba Hari Das, who was a silent monk and yoga master, wrote, don't search for anything except peace. Try to calm your mind. Everything else will come on its own. Which brings us to the title of today's talk, The Chain of Command. Ever notice that how one thought in our mind can lead to another thought that's similar to it and then another thought that's likened to that one, and it just keeps going and going. And whether the first thought was positive or negative, the thought that came next after that first thought went in the direction of that first thought. For example, if the weather is any indication, and all the animals kind of plumping up and storing up is a sign, then it would appear that those long warm days of summer are likely behind us and that fall is before us. Yeah, even though most of us love autumn with all the changing colors and falling leaves and the crisp apples and the abundant harvests, Still, there are some of us 
who can't quite relax and enjoy fully the beauty and the richness it brings. Because there's a feeling of dread that if it's autumn, winter can't be far away. And might as well start dreading it now. Our thoughts play the word game. You know the one where, what's the first thought that comes to you when I say the word? Whatever. So, what's the first thought that comes to you when I say fall? Shorter days? Cooler days? Cold days? Winter darkness? It's important to notice the chain of command when we say a word. Because pretty soon, I mean, we'll be feeling depressed right in the middle of autumn, even though winter hasn't even gotten here yet because we know it's on its way. There is a chain of command. It works both ways, and one thought leads to another thought that we associate with it. In that way, one unpeaceful thought leads to another unpeaceful thought and another unpeaceful thought. And as the song goes, and so on and so on, and scooby dooby doo Oh, Google it if you haven't heard the song. Thoughts become things, and they go in the direction they're headed when they manifest. They become something we feel first, and then they become the things that we see around us. Science of Mind tells us we know that thoughts are things. We know that a thought is intelligent and has power within itself to objectify itself. We know that the world of man is the law of his life under the one great law of all life. Ever had a negative thought come to mind about someone? And then if we focused on that thought for even a minute or two, another negative thought comes to mind and, oh yeah, I remember that. That wasn't very nice. And then one negative thought led to another negative thought and even to a negative thought about somebody else. Might as well throw that one in that we've had a negative experience with or maybe we'll go all the way back to childhood. Oh, I remember that happened to me when I was a kid. And pretty soon we're angry and we're upset because all of those past experiences have been given life again through us in the present moment. That's why it's important for us to be aware of the thoughts that come to our mind as the thoughts come to our mind. When we think about someone, are we see a political poster, or we listen to the news. It's important to notice if a thought feels good or not. Then we won't wonder, well, how did I start thinking about this and wonder why we're so grumpy and unsettled. If a thought feels good, when it comes to mind, we can give it our full attention. And when we do, more thoughts that are just like it will come to mind and more good-feeling thoughts will follow a chain of command and pretty soon we'll be feeling peace and joy and serenity. Thoughts become things. A thought is intelligent and has the power within itself to objectify, and that's how we create a happy life. One peaceful, good-feeling thought at a time. But every thought, 
whether it's fully aligned with spiritual truth or totally ignorant of it, is still creatively intelligent and has the power to objectify itself. Yikes. If a thought doesn't feel good when we think it, it's important for us to think another thought that's happier and more peaceful. Before that first thought takes the lead in the chain of command and directs one thought after another thought after another thought that leads us down the rabbit hole of anger and sadness and resentment and unworthiness and whew, that hole is deep. Louise Hay said, no person, no place, and no thing has any power over us, for we're the only thinkers in our mind. That said, sometimes it feels like there's somebody else thinking in there too. Something, someone like an evil twin that has a voice just like ours but argues against every good thing that we want to focus on and bring into our life. But she goes on to say, when we create peace and harmony and balance in our mind by realizing we are the only one in charge, we will find peace and harmony and balance in our lives. It's essential for us to become the commander of our thoughts, to direct them in the direction we want our life to go. In that way, we become a conscious creator of our life. Life doesn't happen to us, it happens through us. Peace happens through us, and it can happen without us. When we choose to leave the outside as it is and change the only thing that we are actually in charge of, our thoughts, when we calm our own mind with the command, peace, be still. Everything will come on its own. We won't have to fight for it. We'll attract it to us. Peace that's directed from within us is a choice for freedom. It's a choice to be the peace we want to see without fighting against what we don't want to see. As Cicero said, it is the peace that is liberty in tranquility. It's only as we decide to let every breath we take and every step we make be filled with peace and joy and serenity that we can let peace begin with us. Namaste. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> All right. Well, that was that. That's the beginning of our month of peace, and I am so excited about that. And we've got some things planned that I'll talk about next week, but um, some beautiful things, some powerful things related to peace. So, right now is the time of our live streaming service when we have an opportunity. You, wherever you are, sitting under that tree in the forest or in your living room at home, and us, the stream team here in the sanctuary, we all have an opportunity to feel gratitude for this teaching that we have found that, like a savior, saves us from a whole lot. We have an opportunity to feel so thankful 
that despite appearances, we know that there's something beyond. And we know that we can choose to feel it and see it, and it's a beautiful thing. So this is our opportunity to express our gratitude as we're feeling it, or expressing our gratitude to LEC so that we can continue to be part of helping you feel it. So um, if you want to contribute, you can go to uh, Facebook at Life Enrichment Center and hit the donate button. You can go to our website, lecflint.com, and hit the contribute button. You can pay through PayPal. You can send us a check. And we should have enough, some leaves around it for fall. But you can text. All right, so there's lots of ways to give and a lot of ways. When we're bubbling over with gratitude, um, I know we just want to go hug each other. And if you've got another there, hug them. Um, because it's just a beautiful thing uh, to express our gratitude in every way and to go out into this beautiful day and really to start embracing the days as they come with such joy and appreciation, such peace of mind. And as things unfold in our world and in our country, to choose peace to bring that peace to whatever action we take, to bring that peace to the words that we speak, and to truly focus on peace in our mind, to calm our mind so that we can see clearly. Okay, so um, we are going to go ahead and have our uh, gratitude song, and we're going to keep our gratitude song this month grateful because it's such a great gratitude song. It's by Nemo Patel and Daniel Namath. You're my life, you're my breath, you're a smile, you're my guest, you're the earth, you're the sun, you're the grass, you are love, you're my hands, you're a bug, you're my eyes, you're a hug, you're the light in the dark, you're the spark, you are fun, you're my mom, you are water, you're the stars, you're my daughter, you're my friend till the end, you're my dreams, you're my father, you're the ants on the ground, the miracles that surround, I'm feeling it all around, the hemisphere in the clouds, you're my pain, you're my sorrow, you're my hope for tomorrow, you're the strength when I'm hollow, you're the path that I follow, you're the blessings that exist, the small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that everything all that is a I am, all that I see, all that I've been, and all that I'll ever be is a blessing. It's so amazing, and I'm grateful for it all, for it all. Stop to take a bow and keep moving forward and start looking towards your heart. It'll open all the doors and only then you'll start to hear the world singing chorus with your mind and heart. Align and purpose, everything all will feel gorgeous. Sitting pretty cause what I have is more than I deserve or could ever imagine How do I get back to all of this magic and spread the love so everybody can have it Doesn't matter if I'm rich or poor, if I got a family or if I'm all alone Bad things happen, I can just complain and moan But there's a million things that I can be grateful for Yes.
exist The small things that are bliss The gift to realize that everything is a gift We are so grateful this morning to know that everything is a gift. Everything is a gift. There is only God. And so we open to those gifts, those gifts that allow us to see things differently, to see ourselves differently, to see the world differently. And in seeing it that way, to be grateful for everything we see. To know that there is only God, and there is only this life, and this life is God, and this life is a gift, and it is a gift to us. We are that life. Ah, it's great just to be. And we're grateful that we are. And we're grateful that we are together here at the Life Enrichment Center and all the universe. We found each other. And so we just feel so grateful for this day, this day, and all the gifts it holds, and all the ways that we can be that gift for others. It's all good, and we accept that good, and we are grateful for that good, and in being grateful for it, let us say our statement of abundance together. Divine love through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Amen. All right. Well, we have a closing statement, and then we'll close out with our peace song. And it goes like this. Every breath that I take and every step that I make is filled with peace, and joy and serenity. Ready? Every breath that I take, every step that I make is filled with peace and joy and serenity. Again, every breath that I take, every step that I make is filled with peace and joy and serenity. One more time. Every breath I take, every step that I make is filled with peace and joy and serenity. Woo! Yes. What a perfect time to close out with the peace song.